In this video, we're going to talk about this thing right here. This is a magnetic camera mount. It kind of looks like a little rubber hockey puck with a stud on it. So you can buy these in essentially two different ways. You can get just a mount just like this with that quarter 20, which is your standard stud for mounting to anything video or photography related gear, or you can get it with a ball head. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this ball head on here because that's how I use it and that's how I purchased it. So first I wanna say that there will be links to everything you see in this video. There will be links in the description box down below. Some will be B&H links, some will be Amazon links. And their affiliate links, feel free to click on them. They don't cost you any money, but they give me a few cents for this channel. So with that said, this is not a full review. It's just me talking about this product and showing you how I use it. So let's get right to it. Uh, I bought the B&H version. Oban is B&H's like house brand for ball heads and tripods and things like that. The reason I went with that is I have several of these BD-02 ball heads already. I use them on light stands and different things. And I knew before I ever bought the magnetic mount that the only thing that's plastic on this Oban ball head is this T-handle right here and this little wheel right here. The rest of this is magnesium or aluminum, and you got to be very careful if you buy these off of eBay or even off of Amazon, make sure in the description it says that it is like magnesium or aluminum, but it is not plastic. This can be plastic, that can be plastic, but you don't want this ball head to be plastic. Uh, you will have a lot of problems, I guarantee you. So let's jump right in and look at the construction of this simple little thing. All it is is a metal plate and it has a heavy rubber coating on it and it has six magnets in the bottom. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six around like that. They claim that it has 44 pounds of grip. I can't really tell. I have no way of gauging, you know, how much poundage it takes to pull it off once it's stuck onto something but I can say that it does stick on very, very good. So I use it a lot with the action cameras and you can stick it to anything that's metal, anything that's steel. I shouldn't say anything metal, anything steel, iron, anything that a magnet will stick to. Magnets do not stick to stainless steel. They do not stick to aluminum, things like that. So I like to use it on a vehicle while I'm driving. But now I will stick it other places too. Essentially, you want to mount it, the camera to something. It's great if there's a metal surface. It doesn't matter whether it's mounting it this way, this way, upside down. It's great. But if I'm mounting it on a vehicle, I will go directly to the camera, whether it's in the bottom of the camera or on the side of the camera. I will mount it directly like this. So the reason I do that is because I'm going to be driving, bouncing around a little bit, maybe going down the road, and I don't want it to fall off. Now I do use a safety lanyard, and I'll show you this further down in the video. Uh, this is just very simple, but I'll show that a little bit later. So I like to mount directly to the quarter 20, as opposed to this style of mounting, where if I was just going to be sticking it on a metal surface and I wasn't worried, well, then I wouldn't mind having my quick release plate where maybe I want to stick this on a wall or on a frame, something where the camera, you know, get, get the proper angle. And then maybe I want to take the camera off and go use the camera somewhere else to do a time lapse, something like that. I can come back. To the same spot where I was at, my angle's already set up, and I can that's what the quick release is great for. But again, for going to a vehicle, I definitely want to have my quarter 20 on the cage itself or the piece of gear, whatever it is. But in this case, it is a camera cage. Now, mounting to a vehicle, this is nice, smooth rubber surface, it's not going to scratch anything, but the one thing you do want to be very careful of is every time before you mount it to a nice, smooth, shiny surface, whether it's a vehicle or anything else, always run your fingers over it 
just to make sure that it hasn't picked up any little pieces of steel because now those little specks are going to be caught between the painted surface or the smooth surface and this and you could essentially scratch something uh, they do pick up little pieces of debris even in my camera bag there has been times when it has picked up like little pieces of something and then sometimes I set it down somewhere outside pick it up and it's got stuff on there so always just run your fingers over it before you put it onto a surface especially if it's like a car surface now I like to mount these uh, on the door on the hood on the roof they can go on the back of a vehicle you can use more than one you know like if you got you know more than one camera and you want to get different angles you might want to go one on the back one on the right side left side whatever i like to the best place i like to mount mine is on the door of the truck and the reason i like to do that is because i can reach out the door uh, you know, reach out the driver's window and turn it on and off as needed. These are a great tool for any content creator. You know, if you're a content creator and you're doing all kinds of little whatever you do, uh, you want to have all these different little tools like tripods, your drone for telling the aerial sh story. Uh, this is helping you tell the traveling story going down the road. That's what I use it for. So let's go now to the lanyard. So to the lanyard, I have, and you could probably buy these, but all it is is paracord and it's very simple. And I know it looks like it's kind of tied up in a mess right now, but that's just the way I carry it. Uh, this is something that I learned a long time ago when uh, I was young and I worked on construction sites and we had electrical cords that were like 100 feet long. Uh, my boss always wanted me to store them like this. And the reason we stored them like this was it would never tangle and it was easy to undo it. It was something he had learned in the military uh, packing cargo chutes or something is what he told me. So anyway, I have just a simple, like a slip knot uh, noose thing here. And I'll put this around, like say the mirror on the door. And then this can just clip. And this is my safety belt, essentially, in case this comes off while I'm driving. The one thing that you don't want to have happen is have this come off while you're driving. I've never had it happen, but just in case it ever did, uh, number one, you're probably going to lose the camera or damage the camera heavily when it hits the road going 55, 70, however fast you're driving. Uh, the other thing is I don't want it to you know, go out and hit the road, bounce up, hit another car, break a window, dent somebody's car, something like that. Um, you know, you just want to be safe about it. So that's all the safety lanyard is. It's a piece of paracord and it just connects. What was nice, this is the old Osmo with a small rig cage. And this one actually had a little spot where I could clip uh, right into it. And you don't necessarily have to use this type of a clip. You could use like a carabiner, um, you know, standard style, standard style carabiner, but you can go anywhere. Actually, that's not a good place uh, to go. The best place to go would be down here. But anyway, that's all the safety lanyard is. So there you have it. Magnetic mounts. That's how I use them, mostly on vehicles. We'll use them in stationary places. They're great. Uh, when you want to do a time lapse and you want to make sure that the camera doesn't move. So a lot of times if I find something metal or even if it's a stationary vehicle, you put this on there and you can shoot a time lapse. It doesn't matter whether it's a windy day or if people are moving around, it's not going to move at all. They're not going to knock over your tripod. It's stuck right in that spot. Hey, if you like this video, hit like, hit subscribe, come back. I'm harmless. Uh, just wanted to show another mounting option real quick. 
you can also put your safety lanyard if you have one of these. I just happened to have these from some camera straps that I had laying around. So have a great day, everybody.